Hey everybody, welcome to Final Thoughts for Carson City and its expansion, Carson City Golden Guns, or Guns and Gold. What is it? Carson City Gold and Guns. Okie doke. Oh, hi. Well, um, it's a great game. I mean, first, uh, the core game. Carson City, we like it a lot. Got it several years ago. Very much enjoy playing it. Um, although, you know, as you may or may not know, Jen and I are kind of peacenik, goody two-shoes, pussycat players. And the, you know, the whole notion of dueling, we almost never duel. You know, even though a big part of the game is all about that, it's just, I mean, we, we just generally don't want to attack each other. I mean, certain, I mean, occasionally we'll duel if we both desperately need to get the same space, you know, the same action, the, you know, trade in money for victory points. Occasionally we'll do for that. But even still, I mean, normally if we both need that space so desperately that we're dueling for it, whoever wins feels terrible about the uh, pain that whoever lost suffers. So for the most part, even though we can duel, we just, we ignore the triple chip. We ignore, um, you know, because I mean, it's it just completely immaterial to us. But even in spite of that, we very much enjoyed the core game because even if you ignore all the fighting, it's still a really rock solid worker placement game mixed with a uh, territory expansion, city building, engine building game. It's, it, it works really, really nicely. Very, very enjoyable, very flavorful, and also very fast. You know, it plays really quick over just the four years, the four rounds you play, but wow, there's a lot that happens in those four years. Feels really, really great. Really enjoyed a lot. And so now, talking about the expansion. Well, I would say on the whole, it's definitely a huge improvement. I mean, you know, the, uh, the new characters, they're all very neat. The old character, I wouldn't say they're neater. It's just nice to have more variety. And, um, you know, the stuff that gets introduced, the dynamite stuff is really, really great. I didn't actually get a chance to use it because the outlaws got in the way. But dynamite lets you either, I think it's triple the income you off of one mine on your turn. Or when you go into a duel, you can use a piece of dynamite and do roll both dice. So that's really, really awesome. The singer, she's actually really cute. I mean, uh, we like her a lot because now we can both take the same space and we don't have to duel each other. That's awesome for us. So for Peacenik players, a great addition to the game. And on top of that, well, the other side of her is absolutely crazy. Basically, um, what is it? Uh, when you when you gamble, uh, you, you roll two dice. And instead of adding them to find out what you get, you multiply. So suddenly, instead of it being uh, you know a range from two to sixteen, it's two to thirty-six bucks. A huge amount of money can be made if you you know roll fives and sixes and multiply them. But that's such a huge, huge gamble of whether you're not you're actually going to pull that off. And you know. And then, you know, and she actually comes after you've already bought stuff, so pretty much the only thing you can do with all that money, because she only lets you carry, oh, I don't know, the gambling lets you carry 40 over. So that can be really great, but we definitely use her for the, because finally, we don't have to duel each other to get what we desperately need. So that's really great. If, if there's a turn where we think we're both going to be going for, you know, like trying to trade victory points in, I guarantee you somebody's going to take her so they can get where they need to go without fighting. Um, oh, the auction is very, very neat. It's a, it's a fun little way to do it. I really should have demoed that. I should have used this instead of the Indian and just rolled, because um, it's, it's fun to throw an auction in. And, um, you know, and the, the governor's need and the, what do you call it? Oh, the, the, the care, this is interesting. I didn't mention this, I don't think. When you take this card, it breaks the rules because you get to choose which side you want to be. And the doctor benefits you if there's a duel and somebody loses, they can pay you three bucks to replace their worker that turn and not have to wait till next turn to use them. So that's kind of neat, not really that great, but hey, he lets you carry 60 bucks over. The other, the other side's much, much better, 90 bucks carry over. And uh, basically, if there are any duels, whoever loses has to pay you two bucks for your undertaker services, or they lose on victory point. And if it's outlaws that lose, you automatically get to two dollars. So that's actually a really nice one. Uh, the new buildings are very, very cool. Love the station. You know, I love the extra strategy they add to the game. They're all really, really neat. And um, but you know, the main thing, you know, the the star of the expansion is the outlaws and. They're really kind of a mixed feeling. And actually, as painful as it was, this video really demonstrated why. They introduced so much luck to the game. It is just, I mean, this is a game that's relatively low, ru bleh, low luck. So low luck, in fact, that if you want, you can replace the, in duels, you can replace the dice of the game. Hold on, let me grab them. They're over here somewhere. The game comes with these dueling chips that you can use instead. 
If you don't, if you want to take almost all the luck out of the game, when you have a duel, instead of rolling dice to see who wins, everybody secretly chooses one of their dueling chips. And I chose a five, and somebody else chose a four. And you have a limited number of these. So you have to decide, when do I use a really high level one, because I'm desperate to win this fight, um, or when do I use a low one, because I think the other guy has already used all his high ones. You know, so that, you know, I mean, this game can be almost completely luck free. It gets to the point where the only random element is what new buildings come out. But then these adds a huge amount of randomness. Now, on one hand, I don't mind that, but that randomness could definitely destroy one player and leave another player completely alone, and that's what you saw in this demo. Two years in a row, the outlaws just total bad luck on my part. They destroyed me. They completely left Jen alone. They completely changed what I had to do in the game, and. As extra bad luck, they came out so tough, I couldn't even stop them. I just, there's nothing I could do in the world. I mean, I'd have to roll perfect sixes to be able to have beat that guy on the first turn. It's still going to be tough to beat these guys that are blocking both of my minds the second time they've come out. And that's just dumb luck. They could have landed next to Jen's ranch. You know, they could have landed next to Jen's blacksmith. They could have landed out here in the middle of nowhere. But no, both times, all three of them have landed right next to my stuff. And so I got, I got hosed. And that's really unfortunate. I'm really less than enamored with that. And it's too bad because I love the idea of them. I'm so happy to have them in the game because suddenly there's a reason to get the triple um, gunship. There's a reason, there's dueling in the game. I mean, for the game, for peaceniks like us, we can actually have a shootout and that's awesome. We absolutely love the idea of it. But it can be so unfairly punishing to one player. It's almost like, you know, they're, they're not worth adding. Now, you don't have to. All the elements of the game, you can choose which ones to add, so you don't have to add the outlaws, but it's too bad because they're so good. Now, the mitigating factor is, and I didn't do it in this game. I knew better, but I didn't do it. Really, I would say, if you're gonna play with the outlaws, and you're worried at all about this luck factor, which you saw demonstrated here, I got unfairly maligned by these guys. If you want to fix that, what you really need to do is don't use this side of the prospect, or the one I was using in the game. Always use the dynamite side. And while you're at it, always use the, hey, if you're desperate, here's more dynamite you can get from the gunsmith. Because that can be the equalizer. If dynamite had been available to me in the second year, I could have gotten some dynamite and I could have significantly upped my chance of taking out even the toughest bad guy. It, it becomes possible with dynamite. Oftentimes, without dynamite, it's impossible to beat these guys. So pretty much, I would say that the luck of the draw is mitigated quite a bit if you add dynamite to the game. But that's unfortunate because this side is really, really awesome. It's really, I, I don't mind you know, saying, you know what, let's never use this side of the gunsmith because Jen and I never duel anyway, so it's not particularly useful. And the other side's pretty cool, but oh, it's a real shame to have to lose this side of the prospector, because you saw how, how great and useful he is. He's a really great character, and the, you know the the outlaws pretty much force you to use the other side. But anyway, that's that's my only complaint about the expansion. Otherwise, I would say it's near perfect. It's it's absolutely wonderful. It adds so much cool stuff. Love all the new buildings. You know, love mixing the old characters with the new characters. Love, 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 love having a reason to have gunfights. Um, when Jen and I don't forget, oh, absolutely love this singer because now we don't have to duel to get the spaces we need. So much to love. One very unfortunate, you know, the randomness of how these guys come in just is just awful. And I wish they would have chosen something different, but like I said, it's mitigated if you put dynamite back in the game. So I guess that's only a minor bother as opposed to a major don't buy this terrible thing because these outlaws are just terrible because they just luck of the draw means somebody will lose. I mean, I'm in danger of losing this game through no fault of my own solely because those outlaws came out and just nailed me. Now, and, you know, and, and on the first turn, you know, I rolled a one and lost anyway. So I mean, that, I, that, you know, I, I cheated just so I could demonstrate winning because that was more important to demonstrate. And so I scored five points. And so you know, the outlaws are, are another way to, another path to victory. So that's totally cool, but the fact that they can just, uh, anyway. So the outlaws are kind of a mixed blessing. I really wish they had a different way to be deployed into the world or some kind of mitigating factor so they wouldn't just, because every time we've used them so far, this has happened. Either I've been the one who's just, you know, just total dumb random luck, have just been completely devastated by them, or Jen has. And it's just completely changed everything we have to do and we have to just totally devote, devote all our focus on fighting them. And so that's, mm, oh well, but anyway, so, I guess kind of a mixed review on the expansion. I still think it's really great. I still think it's a net positive. I would, I'm still happy to have it. You'll notice I don't have the box for it anymore because everything lives in this box. The core game, absolutely fantastic. Even with the minor niggle of, you know, if you don't want to have 
dueling in the base game, you miss quite a bit of the game. But you know, of course, a lot of players, they love, that's what they love about this game, is it's a worker placement where you can shoot your opponent's workers. Whee! Not for us, but it might be for you. And even if it's not for you, there's still a lot to love here in Carson City. Okay, everybody, that's the run through for today. Hope this has been illuminating, and hope you had a rootin' tootin' good time uh, here at Carson City. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Yeehaw!